واضح uh, it is uh, an obligation validate the salat with, uh, without it you know the salat is void that also it's not in the uh, line of our study so you see how many things you will be able to uh, you know advance in the tafsir without reading the whole book because sometimes if you want to read uh, tafsir you'll find yourself you know getting into very detailed things then you lost the track of what where you were so I said, my objective is to learn something for me. I want to increase my khushua, for example. You read, my objective is to increase my khushua. This ayah, this hadith will boost your khushua. Because when you speak, you know that Allah is listening to you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answering at every word you say. Okay. Let's start the tafsir by contemplation. Qal, uh, we'll hear, qala bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's put uh, all these ahadith are not, I mean, you can study it, you have the book, but we want to go through our tafsir. So, let's here open the Arabic one, just to want to reflect on it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If we say that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is the uh, an A, okay? Now when we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, which is in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful. So in the name of Allah, it's really, uh, it's the beginning, right? So it's, it's telling you, this is in the name of Allah, I'll start. So, for you, when you think, we know that everything should start Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. But in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the key to, to what? I want you to think. <laughs> Just, you know. So when I say, look, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I read it every day. At least 17 times. Then when I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I will think just, you know, to help in the way of the tafsir. Because we can read it. When you read it, we might not understand the way that we want to reflect on it in, the, in our study here. So I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful. So here I have the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the name of Al-Alam, of Allah, that the name who has the whole, you know, beautiful names. So Allah is the name that has the beautiful names. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى So they say, Ar-Rahman is one of the Asma'i Allahi Al-Husna. Ar-Rahimu is one of Asma illahi al husn Al Malik al Quddus al Salam al Mu'min al Muhaymin al All of them asma of Allah. So what is the name of Allah is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So when I say Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it what is going to have in your mind? Allah, the Deity worthy of worship. So you're gonna say La ilaha illa Allah. So Allah represent here. The Uluhi represent here Al Maliku represent here Al Ilahu to whom you subhanallah submit. What? When I say Ar Rahman Ar Rahim is the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah chose in the beginning of His book to identify Himself. With the best of the attributes. So when there is wrath and there is rahmah, which comes first? The rahmah, because he's a rahman al rahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you, in the name of Allah, 
the one do you worship, the one who had the kingdom of the heaven and the earth, you're going to say, the one who had the kingdom is going to be kind or is going to be someone who's going to be like, you know, a transgressor. Is going to someone to be taking care of his creation or not caring of his creation? So, Bismillahi Allah, bring veneration in your heart. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Subhanallah, pour over that veneration the softness of the heart because he's Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. It's like the name of Allah increase the fear in your heart. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, fill it with the hope in Rahmatullah. So here, subhanAllah, the balance into your heart being already defined in the first ayah. Then he said, in the name of Allah. Bismillah. In the name of Allah, which everything, everything in your life, it has one key, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is mean when you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hmm? You entered in this fear of Al-Ubudiyah and the sphere of al Ma'iyah. I'll give you an example. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed to him, Qala Iqra, Qala Ma Ana Biqal. I cannot read. What I'm going to read? I don't know how to read. I don't even know how to read. And Jibreel alayhi salam kept saying Iqra, the first, the second, the third time. In one of the analysis that we have made in the Sira, we say the Iqra to confirm, but the last one, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam said it, confirming that it is impossible for him to read. If you give him something to read, he is not able to read. However, look at the first A, what it says. Yes, you can read. How? Bismillah. Bismillah. So, the name of Allah, make what you are facing that is impossible. The key of the impossible to be possible is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the options in your life, all the possibilities that you'll be facing in your life, if you want them to happen or to be opening for you, they have only one key, is the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Then when he said, Iqra bismi rabbik, so the key of Iqra, or of Iqra is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help. So, you see the Fatiha, before I go farther here, so the Fatiha itself is a munajat, is khitab to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is also a dua, it's a supplication. And subhanallah, in another hadith the Prophet sallallahu mentioned, as he said to, that we have mentioned, to obey, that nothing has been, uh, you know, uh, revealed like the Fatiha in the Tawrat, wal Injil, wal Quran. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi he said, "I have received a Jibril alayhi salam narrating what Jibril told him. He said, these two things that been revealed to you, only you you have them. You know, none of the other prophet before you get them." Surah Al-Fatiha and the last three ayah of Surah 
البخر طيب if and ask you what is the the let's say the element that bring them together what is the element to make them be the unique uh, part of the Quran that been revealed to the Prophet so for example I say because none of the prophets have them before he said but okay we understand for Surah Al-Fatiha the end of Surah Al-Baqarah what they have as a common to be the unique ones This is Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, Al-Baqarah. What they have as a cam. Said Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, right? Tell what it has as a cam. Just we are thinking, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> it's not a test, okay? Here, the last three ayat. Here. لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَإِنْ تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ وَتُخْفُوهِ حَاسِبْكُمْ بِاللَّهِ فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَا يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَكِيلٍ آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربي والمؤمنون لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لا ما كسبت علي ربنا لا تأخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملت على الذين من قبلنا تذأن The common point These are two ayat where us making dua to Allah Look ربنا Who's speaking here? It's us. In Surah Al-Fatiha, who's speaking here? Ihdina, guide us. Look, us. So, subhanAllah, look, Allah is honoring to the followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Allah sending down with his own words to teach you how to make dua to him. Now let's get an example. Someone, for example, uh, you know, he's, he's longing for something to get from a king. The king heard about this person. He's a generous king. He sent to this, uh, you know, subject, he said, you know, if you want your thing being satisfied and granted, this is how you should write the letter. What? <laughs> That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did for us. Huh? You want rahmah? Here, this is what you need to say. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you the rahmah and grant you the way how to ask him for the rahmah that he guaranteed that he's going to give it to you. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Here. It the keys to all the possibilities, when I say possibilities, in every moment there's infinite of possibility that can happen to you in your life. When you say in the name of Allah, what you have brought? You have brought the whole ma'iyya of Allah in every step you do in your life. 
And the ma'iyah of Allah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with you. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, to qarriru al-muntalaq, is defined for you the starting point, give you the ma'iyah, and define for you the tawakkul. Said, you know, tawakkal to Allah. How can you tawakkal to When you do everything, when you say, I'm relying on Allah, the first thing you say, say, Bismillah. When you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So, you're saying everything you start with, Bismillah. So, now you enter in the sphere of Al-Uluhi. You enter in the sphere of Al-Uluhi. You are the servant of Allah, inquiring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help. And you are now under the cover that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your wali. Allah wali yu ladina amanu. You see now you enter, you said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You enter the sphere of having Allah your wali. You say, Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. When you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, it's very clear. There's, there's not required tafsir, right? I mean, they say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise to Allah, the cherisher and the sustainer of the words. However, the question, you're saying Hamd for what? Say, how's your hair? He said, Alhamdulillah. How's everything doing? He said, Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah, everything is doing good. Did you uh, get what you're waiting for? He said, Alhamdulillah. You just finished it. You said, Alhamdulillah. But here you're saying, Alhamdulillah, for what? You didn't start saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So the hamd here, just when I ask a question, I'm not necessarily waiting for answer. Just ask a question as a way of reflections. So alhamdulillah here, subhanallah, it is when you stand before Allah, in salat, and you say alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, that the fact that you're standing before Allah is the greatest gift that you, you, I mean, the greatest gift that you have been given in your life. You are making hamd to Allah on the most important thing in this whole existence, which are Two things, the uluhiyya of Allah and the rububiyya of Allah. So you make him to Allah because he is Allah. And you make him to Allah because he is the God of the worlds. If you try to define simply these two words, so you're making hamd that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wahidun ahad. You're making hamd to Allah, the one who guides you to be servant to him. You're making hamd to Allah because he's the one and the only and because if he has any partner, nothing will stand right in this universe. You're making hamd to Allah, the one who gave you the iman, the one who guide you to stand before him, the one who guide you to and give you the gift to make sujood to him. Alhamdulillah. So the hamd to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for his rububiyyah, that he's the provider, that he's the cherisher, that he's the wali, 
and so on from all the asma Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, an absolute hamd that is not restricted to any gift that in your hand, but an absolute hamd to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his uluhiyya and for his rububiyya subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this hamd, when you start with, will be, subhanAllah, the element that help to guide your life. Then this hamd will be the base of your perception, of your vision of life. Now imagine, not imagine, that what we should have, that the hamd that you have, and you say, Alhamdulillah for being a servant of Allah. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my ilah. If you value this gift, then all the other gift in this life from the dunya does not have that value. If you value this gift, then the most important thing and the dearest to your heart is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. If you value this gift by saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, you will be wallahi and certainly free from this dunya. You liberate yourself from the chains of this dunya. So Alhamdulillahi, uh, it is if you think of it, it is kind of the recipient of your own thinking. Because, look, uh, I'll give you an example. People who, you know, in gen general common people living in the world of today, the way of thinking is based, for example, what is the most important. The most important for all of the people, I mean, to be, إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ اللَّهِ is money. Is money. طيب, what governs their emotion is the increase or decrease of the money. Right. صح ولا لا? So it becomes without thinking about it. In, in back in their unconscious, whatever related to money, that will they be attached to, drawn to it. So uh, we talked to this mainly in, in the class of the Aqidah. So you find people, subhanAllah, they look in, you know, they like the people who has money. They're fond of the people who has money. They follow the people who has money. They get even the news of the people who has money. Right? Why? Because they want to be like them. So, the love of the money is what governing the whole thinking and emotions. And directing one's life. And this is very obvious, right? It's very normal what I'm saying. All of you agree, right? How can you change this as a believer to be what govern your emotion is the love of Allah? If you make the iman that Allah gave you is as important as these people who have the money important in their heart. Because the problem, believers, Muslims, they take the iman as granted. Something is like, yeah, we have it like the water. Wherever you, you, oh, you turn on the faucet or you go to the store, there is water. Believe me, the day when this is taken away, you'll see how people killing each other. So it's like the iman is granted, something like you have it, you don't worry about it. Think about how to make money. You know. If we take this A, this A, 
Alhamdulillah, in absolute way, at the base and the foundation of your thinking, then you cure your heart. So the base of the purification is to make the hamd sincerely and truly that in a way that you really, you really believe and you feel that the greatest thing in your life is the iman that Allah gave you. It requires training. So which is mean when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen in the Fatiha, you don't need anything else. That's it. You are at the highest level of the gifts. If you understand this, you understand the lives of the prophets. You understand the life of Ibrahim, encountering all these difficulties, because already he has all the gifts. He's at the summit of all the gifts. You understand that one of the tabi'in, when he was found in, in a cave, and he was, subhanAllah, blind, and, and his limbs are cut off. And subhanAllah told him someone, how are you? He said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So he want to, like, you know, kind of uh, joking, but he's like a kind of harsh joke. He said, saying Alhamdulillah, and you cannot even move. You cannot do anything. So he said, that's because you are ignorant. Alhamdulillah that he gave me a tongue so I can remember him to soften my heart and to be with him in all the time. So this, this ayah of Alhamd, this ayah of Alhamd, it is our daily training to cleanse our heart to check it is enough for you or not. Because when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, you say, Ya Allah, give me Rahma. He said, you already get it. You already said Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allah, I need this. Ya Allah, give me this. That's why Salihin and even the Prophet, when they make dua, they don't say, Ya Allah, give me this. Like Ayyub, what he said. Harm has touched me. And harm, what is this harm? This harm, Ya Allah, that is going to stop me or alter my dhikr to you. Not the disease that, they, that he had. Yunus, what he said. Ya Allah, I'm here trapped in the stomach of the whale. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, help me. Ya Allah, get me out of here. No. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Now, if you try to understand this uh, dua, Yunus, when he said Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, he's at the top of the gifts. Anything goes down, so it's him because he did transgress himself. So, La ilaha illa anta to restore the hamd. Inni kuntu min al forgive me, Allah, to bring me back where I was. So, when he says, Subhanallah, uh, and you can go more and more in the, the hamd. That's why the dearest words to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to listen from his servant is subhanallah walhamdulillah. Huh? More... <laughs> More Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, uh, you know, do not, you know, have your children to go through some harsh time. 
to appreciate the gifts. That's the uh, advice of Omar. He said, if you always give them the best of the food and everything, they grow, you know, kind of uh, not knowing the need, not feeling, uh, ang- uh, you know, the hunger, not feeling starving, not feeling, they're not going to be. <laughs> Ramadan is the only opportunity in our society today to help our kids and <laughs> ourselves remember. Huh? And uh, even though people, they find always excuses. But uh, the important, the important is to instill in ourselves and in our children uh, is the the gift of Iman that is the most important thing. The gift of money help you, provide for you. But the gift of money, the end of it is the grave. The gift of the family, the children, everything, the end of it is the grave. The gift of the Iman enter with you in the grave, stand with you at the land of resurrection, be with you when you're meeting Allah, and with the Iman you go by the help of Allah, to the mercy of Allah. So this kind of talk to our children help them to appreciate the meaning of the hamd. So to make hamd to Allah, that Allah is la ilaha illallah. Because you make hand to Allah in an affirmative and a positive way that Allah is wahidun, ahad. But also you make hand in the other way that hand that you are not mushrik. And are different, by the way. Because two angles. An angle to see the rahmah, an angle to see that how you are protected from the other. As Yusuf alayhi salam said it. Dalika min fadlillahi alayna. Wa ala al-nasi wa lakinna akthar al-nasi la ya'lam. Wa lakinna akthar al-nasi la yashkuru. Ah, let's have it this area. Wallahi. Nice. And this is all in the hamd. So this is just few reflections to see how deep and profound the book of Allah. As I told you, we can go farther and farther in just alhamd. But the most important point that I would like, insha'Allah, to, you know, for you, you to, to retain, that this is an absolute hamd, is not limited or restricted or associated to any of the tangible gift we have. So when you breathe and you think of Allah, you're saying, Alhamdulillah, you have everything. Wallahi, you don't need anything else. That's how what we need to, to think and believe, I mean, understand from this ayah. And this is how we can understand the life of the Prophet and of the Salihin. I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu staying a whole month in a place when he didn't speak to his wives. And uh, laying on on a hasir, hasir that hard mat, you know, that make of straws. And and Subhanallah, athar fi jambihi, all is like marks in his back, on his sides. Uh, 
And you say, as Umar radiallahu ta'ala and said, he started to cry when he saw him. He said, Kisra and the Qaisar in what they are and do the best of the creation, Rasulullah. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, those people, they have the dunya. Allah give us the akhirah. So, if you breathe, as the subhanallah, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu he said, whoever who has his, you know, provision for his day, and he's safe at his home, he's like he owned the whole earth. Because you pray, you have your food, you know, just ate, and you are safe with your family, you have the kingdom of the whole world. Someone has a 20 bedrooms. How many bedrooms are you going to use to sleep? <laughs> Look. واتبعت ملة آبائي إبراهيم وإسحاق ويعقوب ما كان لنا أن نشرك بالله من شيء ما كان لنا and it was not for us to associate anything with Allah that is from the favor of Allah ذلك خير this is the gift of Allah so it's like the action to not make shirk is a gift from Allah on you so to stand and say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, you made the journey filled with the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you not say, Alhamdulillah? ولكن أكثر الناس لا يشكرون. Most of the people, subhanallah, as he said here, do not, are not grateful. Yashkurun, they do not think of Allah. They do not say Alhamdulillah. What? Say. What is the effect of the path of making the hamd this way and make it the starting point of your thinking and your life so for example if you make hamd this way you're not belonging for the dunya which does not mean that it's haram to like things no but you will have contentment in your heart because you are satisfied you got everything that's the power of the hamd this is the subhanallah the first ayah in the quran Wallahi, you don't need anything. However, I mean, a person is weak. One time I told you, if there is something that is, you know, uh, distracting your mind, anything that you have from this dunya, of course, halal, ask Allah to give it to you, not because you love it, because you are still weak and this thing is distracting you. <laughs> Sometimes someone wants something, you know, anything, a toy or something, you know. And as soon as he starts to pray, that thing comes in his mind. When he reads the Quran, comes in his mind. He said, Ya Allah, give it to me. Just I want to focus. I'm still weak. <laughs> it's a tactic to find some khushua. And as soon as you get this thing, it's already, you know, you, you mean, you're not attached to it. Why? Because you already walked on certain steps for Allah to help you to be stronger in your heart. Then you come to the point when you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, you are at the highest level of joy and happiness. You don't need anything else. Say, what is the effect? As we have mentioned now, the main effect is to make you a person humble. Subhanallah, to bisuk thawbat tawada. Because 
when you are at the highest level of satisfaction, you'll not be longing for anything from this dunya. Therefore, you're not going to be jealous or envious from anything. And because Allah gave you the Iman and you are grateful for the Iman, you're going to be a person who humble yourself. Why? Because that's the way how to maintain the gift of the Iman. So look, subhanAllah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, open the keys of the tawakkul. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, help you to have the clothes of tawadah. When you come to Iyaka Na'budu, Iyaka Nasta'een, you're going to be <laughs> beyond the seven heaven. <laughs> huh? Again, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Subhanallah. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, after in this sequence that we have mentioned, is going to pour on your heart hope and increase the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the one that you worship, the one that you glorify, the one that you are grateful to, he is Rahman and Rahim. The scholar, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala, they say about Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, one of the main uh, tafsir that is being said, qala uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال he نبأ عبادي أني أنا الغفور الرحيم وأن عذابي هو العذاب الأليم tell my servant that I am the oft forgiven the rahim قال in other ayah قال إن ربك سريع العقاب وإنه لغفور الرحيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala سريع العقاب is fast in in retribution subhanahu wa ta'ala but he is the oft forgiven, the specially merciful. So, al asariyu al yaqab fi tarheeb. To Subhanallah makes someone be frightened, scared, feared. Al Rahman al Rahim fi tarheeb. To have you, Subhanallah, have longing for his hope. And, and then when you are longing for the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is going to help you fulfill the worship with love. Not because you are forced to. Because if you fulfill the worship because you have to do them, you will not find the sweetness in them. But if you fulfill them, and you know that the one that you are fulfilling this worship to, he is Arhamur Rahim. That subhanAllah is going to increase your attachment, your longing to be nearer and nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, uh, just I want to tell you the hadith, Ar-Rahman is the name of Allah that he is Ar-Rahman, the most merciful for the whole humankind, for the whole universe, for whole creation. Ar-Rahim is especially merciful to the believer. Rahman al-dunya wal-akhirah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Rahman in the dunya and the Rahman in the akhirah. And in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that my Rahma was divided to 99 parts. One part 
in this dunya and Allah delayed 99 parts to the akhir. Any other mention that the rahmah seen in the day of judgment an overwhelming rahmah to the point that Iblis lift his head longing maybe this part of rahmah will touch him. They will. قال هنا أجيب the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying لا يدخل أحدكم الجنة بعمله إلا أن يتغمده الله برحمته no one will be able to enter paradise with his deeds except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala embrace him in his mercy. So you say, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, that's the key, subhanallah, to your, to the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there's many ayat that show the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you can uh, refer to those ayat. Here I read some of Qala Ar-Rahmanu Rahmat Allah fi rububiyyatihi li khalqihi fahwa yumhilu al-asi wa yaftahu abwaab al-tawbati li kulli man yaljau ilayhi So Ar-Rahman for the whole the creation by providing them by giving them what they ask and by giving, postponing the ungrateful, and also if this ungrateful comes back, Allah opened for him or for her the bab of Rahmah, at tawbah This is some aspect of the Rahmah, uh, ar rahman ar rahim But the most important, that as we, the scholar of the tafsir, they said, Ar-Rahmanu is for the uh, whole creation, Ar-Rahimu is specific for the believers. Ar-Rahimu is specific for the believers. Malik Yawm Al-Din, step by step. Malik Yawm al-Din. Now if you see the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim for the believers. So here for the believers, after you make in hamd, fully satisfied with what Allah gave you from the Iman, Ar-Rahman, add more as soon as to the heart, Ar-Rahim make you to be closer and closer because this is specifically, especially for you, O believer. وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's read this ayat in explanation of Ar-Rahim in Surah Al-Ahzab, in Surah Al-Ahzab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to the believer to remember him, much remembrance, For one reason. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu dhkuru allaha dhikran kathir. Celebrate the praises of Allah and do this often. Much remembrance. Remember Allah with much remembrance. وَسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا And glorify him morning and evening. بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا هو الذي Look, هو الذي هو الذي It is him, سبحانه وتعالى It is 
who the one who sends his blessing. Yusalli alaykum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yusalli alaykum. The salat of Allah on the believer is to send his blessing on them. Wa malaikatuh. And his angels. The salat of the angels to the believer is to ask forgiveness for them. لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النور To take you out of the darkness to the light. And we said, this ikhraj is a whole journey of life. Huh? وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا You see here? Rahim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever most merciful to the believers. Huh? And ever is he to the believers merciful. Rahim. So Rahim is specifically for the believer. So Allah is t- telling you that I'm already sending my blessing, commanding my angel to ask forgiveness, to help you, guide you to the pure light, complete light. Why? Because the Allah is Rahim to you, O believer. It does not end here. Tahiyyatuhum, they greeting the day they meet him, salam. Wa a'adda lahum ajran kareema. The salutation on the day they meet him will be peace. And he has prepared for them a generous reward. But this is when you say ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Not Rahman that he is providing you. It's Rahim that you're going to meet him with Salam. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Salam, what do you say? What do you say? Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dal jalali wal ikram. No, Rahman al dunya wal akhirah. Rahimun for the believers. As the many of the scholars. Some of the scholars they say they have the same meaning. Because Rahman is Rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to put them together, Ar Rahimu is especially merciful for the believer. You know. I can uh, try to find the hadith that I have mentioned. طيب مالك يوم الدين مالك يوم الدين in سورة الفاتحة the only owner of the day of the judgment also it's known there is two قراءات in the Quran of مالك so there is مالك and مالك مالك and مالك مالك is the king ومالك is the owner when you bring the two qiraat together, there is no, in the whole history of humankind, a king that owner of everything. And there is no owner that also a king. The only king of the kings and owner of everything is Allah. Now, there's the domain of the, of the ownership beyond the tangible. 
Because there is something, I'll show you an A, eh? it's an amazing A. And it's really give you perspective of meaning of Maliki and Malik. Is in Surah Al Furqan. تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا الذي له ملك السماوات له ملك the kingdom of the heaven and the earth and he didn't took uh, he has taken any uh, son ولم يكن له شريك في الملك وخلق كل شيء فقدره تقديرا واتخذوا من دونه آلهة and they took you know uh, they have taken beside him other آلهة لا يخلقون شيئا وهم يخلقون that they are created, nothing but are themselves created. وَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ uh, وَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ What? Kingdom, earth, ضَرًّا وَلَا نَفَعًا So, beyond what you can have as assets or estate, there is something that you cannot even own or possess. Can you create, do good, uh, own for yourself good in the future? And this is the profound part that I want to share with you. وَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ مَوْتًا وَلَا حَيَاةً وَلَا نُشْوَرًا So the death that everybody is scared of, the death that destroys the desire, the death that make all these, you know, thinkers and scientists to be like, subhanAllah, uh, like, because for certain people, the greatest of evil is death, those atheists. So the death who is in front of them, they are incapable destroy everything for them, the end of everything, is, it, is, is an ownership of Allah. So it's, we're not talking about Maliki, someone who owns, you know, uh, tables and furniture and houses. No, he owns beyond that you can even think, beyond that you can control. He said, you know, someone, for example, say, what do you, can you do to death? What can I do? He said, you know, death is a creation of Allah and belongs to Allah. That's why, subhanAllah, uh, the death will uh, cease to exist in the day of judgment. The death will become into kind of uh, taking the body of a ram and put on the wall or the sur the partition between the Jannah and the Nar. And it will be slaughtered. يقول يا أهل الجنة خلود ولا موت ويا أهل النار خلود ولا موت. No death. That's it. Death is gone. The people of her fire, they don't live and they don't die. They have a new life. لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا is والعياذ بالله the worst of existence you cannot live to breathe to see something to just have like a moment no there is nothing and he cannot die because death becomes the best of the wishes يا مالك ليقضي علينا ربك يا مالك ask your lord was the chief of hellfire to make an end to our life. What end? 
I mean, the death that could have made end to your life ceased to exist. It belongs to Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it away. Maliki yawm al Maliki yawm al This is, is going to define, look, alhamdulillah, is guide and build the foundation of your vision of life. Maliki Yawm al-Din define the purpose of your life. See, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, foundation. Ar-Rahman rahim relation. Maliki Yawm al-Din, purpose. So when you think today you have the free will, today you can do whatever you want. No one can talk to you. You know one can, nobody can stop you. Do whatever you want. How many people that get them to the court every day? How many people that get them to the jail every day? Many, right? How many tyrants they get them to the court? None. <laughs> this person, he killed, you know, uh, a person. They take him to the court, of course. He killed. They, killing one person is a crime, unforgivable crime. Killing a whole nation, take it to the United Nations. <laughs> Just, you know, qala amrun fihi nadar. A matter to be just, uh, uh, you know, studied. Let's check it. فَمَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ He's going to bring all those people. So, مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ Let's go farther in a little bit of analysis. Where your free will will stop by death. You don't have any choices anymore. You cannot do whatever you want. That's it. It ends. What do you have when you resurrect? The only thing that you have is your soul and what you have. And the soul is created by Allah. But the way that you have used your soul and you filled it with the deeds that you chose to do. Nobody forced you. قَالَ فَإِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ وَحُصِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ So what حُصِّل مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ That's your identity. That's your identity. طيب. I'm going to show you an ayah. So الموت is the kingdom of Allah. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala property. Al-Hayat, the property of Allah. I'll show you an ayah, which is good for you to understand it. There's a profound meaning in it. In Surah Al-Baqarah. When the Bani Israel, they took the calf as a god, right? And Musa alayhi salam came back and he was mad. So what he told them, if Allah want to repent, accept their repentance. Look. And recall when Musa said to his people, Oh, my people, indeed you have wronged yourself, but you're taking off the calf for worship. So repent to your creator and kill yourselves. 
not kill yourself, commit. I mean, it was dark, and they start to hit each other till the dawn. What's the meaning of this? Look, that is best for all of you in the sight of your Creator, then He accepted your repentance. The explanation of the A. Allah gave you life. It belongs to Him, not to you. And you wronged yourself after all what Allah gave you a gift. If you want Allah to accept your repentance, I want you to give me back the life because you don't deserve it anymore. You see? So who owned your life? It's Allah. That's why when he said, SubhanAllah, Inna Allah ashtara min al mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum. Allah bought from their, uh, the believer their lives. It belongs to him. He didn't buy it. He wants to honor you. It's like someone, you know, a generous person. He said, I'm going to give you a gift. Take this. He said, oh, thank you. I like this gift. This was great. Nice from you. He said, and then another day came to you. He said, you remember a gift they gave you? He said, um, how much you think it value? He said, maybe $20. Will you give it back to me if I'll give you a million dollars? I said, take it now. <laughs> That's what Allah is saying to the believer. A life that I own, I'll give it to you to use it for your test. Now give it back to me, I'll give you Jannah. And the resurrection. Who, who can, subhanAllah, who can die and come back to life? Allah, subhanAllah. The only one, Allah, subhanAllah. So you see, you know, Maliki, how profound is when you just try to analyze some of its element of the mulk of the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he said alhamdulillah is what give you the subhanallah the the muntalaq the beginning the the starting point ar-rahman ar-rahim is that connection maliki yawm ad is the purpose it defines the purpose of your life. Now, the other ayah I want to share with you before we leave. The life belongs to Allah. The death belongs to Allah. The resurrection belongs to Allah. So when you come to the day of judgment, your identity is what you have stored into your chest, which is mean in your soul, which is mean your own deeds. When you had the free will. When you come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you have? Do you understand my question in this next A? Giving us a hard, a hard time. Huh? Maybe this one should work. Wrong uh, network, I think. Uh, 
يا ما شاء الله طيب حاميم تنزل كتابي من الرحمن الرحيم So you come in the day of judgment with what you have in your chest the life belongs to Allah everything belongs to Allah and look look this ayah قال ويوم يحشر أعداء الله إلى النار فهم يوزعون and mention the day when the enemies of Allah will be gathered to the fire while they are driven assembled in rows حتى إذا ما جاءوها until when they reach it they hearing and their eyes and their skins will testify against them So your skin does not belong to you. Your hands does not belong to you. Your eyes does not belong to you. Nothing belongs to you. They are all being given as a gift for you to use it for the mission of your life. That's why Maliki Yawm Din is the purpose. How are you going to get there to meet Maliki Yawm Din? Man. حتى قال شهد عليهم سمعهم وأبصارهم وجلودهم بما كانوا يعملون وقالوا لجلودهم لما شهدتم علينا they said to their skin what are you testifying against us we are the same I mean it's you and me the same he said no 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 the hand that you have is a gift from Allah Allah took away the free will I obey Allah I'm not going to obey you then you think today that all what you have, even your own hands, is being given to you as a gift to use for this life. That's why lowering the gaze, how can you use a gift given to you by Allah to disobey Allah? Look, the more you do action good, the more, subhanAllah, the lights spread into your whole body the less the less light قال الله سبحانه وتعالى in the hadith he will be obeying Allah سبحانه وتعالى قال حتى إذا أحببته he will be doing this and doing قال أحب ما تقرب إلي عبدي به ما افترضت عليه قال ولا يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه and he's still keeping doing voluntary action till I love him. فإذا أحببت وكنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به. So Allah subhanahu wa taala, what it means that the closer to Allah, everything becomes light. You'll see with Allah's way. You listen to Allah's way. You act in Allah's way. Therefore, everything will be witnessing for your favor. And here, subhanAllah, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهَدْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ Why are you doing this? Look what they said. And they will say to their skins, Why bear you witness against us? Why, what have you testified against us? They will say, We were made to speak by Allah, who has made everything speak, and He created you the first time, and to Him you are returned. ف والساب هير بإذن الله مالك يوم الدين هي the purpose of life how it is the purpose of life because that were the most important the most important time of your existence is when you going to stand before Allah. Death, it's only a vessel in which you travel to the next phase of your life. And Allah reminding you in every salat, when you say, Maliki Yawm din what does it mean? The king of the day of judgment. Are you going to be in the, you know, in the host or like, uh, you know, so one of the great honored guests, or one of those who are being hated by Allah. 
Nobody can intervene. He's Malik Yawmuddin. So your purpose of life is how to be in peace and in friendship with the one that is the king of the deen. In every place, people, they long to be in a good term with the ruler. <laughs> huh? If the ruler is mad at you, that's it. <laughs> in figure of speech. So the only one that you want to be in good term with, who? Is Malik Yawmuddin. Who is Malik Yawmuddin? Allah. That's the purpose of life. How to express this purpose of life? The next of the fatiha. You'll see that the whole, why is the most important eh? surah? Because it contains the whole Quran. Is surah fatiha. If you have any question, please ask, inshallah, before we leave. The uh, next week, inshallah, uh, I will not be here. I will be in out of town, alhamdulillah, doing the same thing. Um, your homework, Surah Iqra, Surah Iqra, to define the topic tree and then the tafsir. And we study it together, inshallah, next time. So, Iqra, we're going to, inshallah, try to find in it, you know, more meaning by uh, having the topic, studying the topic first. As you see, it's an amazing thing. So, when you put it together, as we have put Surah Saf and put Surah Al Qiyamah, and with that, let's say, uh, vision that we build from the topic, we'll look into the meaning, and of course, after referring to the, to the ma'thur in Surah al Surah Iqra, inshaAllah. Jazakumullah khayyam,